In this video, we will walk you through the steps in creating and exporting a halftone image. This will allow you to use your Axiom laser accessory to create photo quality work. This is the image that we will be using. Remember, the higher the resolution of the image, the better the finished quality will be. Getting started, you'll first need to visit the website that you see on your screen. This way you can download the free halftoning software that we'll be using. Once you're on the website, click the Download Half Toner V1, and once you've downloaded it, simply open it up. You can also find a link to the website in the video description. We can click the Load Image button, find our image wherever we have that stored, and simply import it. On the right side of the screen, you'll see a list of recommended settings, which will serve as a good starting point. Many of these settings can be found in your laser manual. If you have any further questions, simply email the Axiom support team at axiomtoolgroup.com. We're going to start by entering in all of our recommended settings. This will serve as a good baseline. Remember, each image will be slightly different, and you may have to adjust depending on the image you're using. Now that our base settings are in place, we can start to see a rough preview of our half-toned image. And we can already tell we're going to have to make a few adjustments, as our border has been slightly cut off. We can adjust this by changing the border setting. We can make it tighter around the image, or we can have it go out to the edge. Adjusting the spacing will change the distance between the dots. You want to try to keep the image fairly light for the best results. Min and max sizes will control the size of the dots created. For best results, leave your angle at 45 degrees. Up top, you'll see multiple tabs. We will not be using the Toolpaths tab since we will be importing our files into the Vetrix software. The DXF tab will allow us to save our files. The Adjust tab will give us the option to adjust the brightness and the contrast. Once we are happy with our image and we like how it looks, we can press the DXF tab and then save our file. Remember to save your file as a PNG. Now we can open a new session of the Vetrix software. For our job setup, we will be using a single-sided job with a size of 10 by 12 by quarter inch thick. Our Z0 position will be the material surface, and the XY0 position will be set in the center. To import our halftone image, go to File, Import, and Import Bitmap. Then locate the selected file, and click Open. Now that our image has been imported, we can zoom in and we can see all the dots that we've created. So now, we simply need to trace these and create vectors. Let's resize our image to the size of our material. Then we'll click the Trace Bitmap tool under Create Vectors. We'll be using black and white for tracing, and we want to set all of our sliders to the default setting. Then press Preview. Now when we zoom in, we should see all of our dots have been traced, and now are vectorized. Now that we have our vectors, we can switch to the Toolpath tab and use the Quick Engrave Toolpath. Press the Select Tool button just to be sure you have your laser tool selected. From this window, you can verify that all of your laser settings are correct. If you have not yet set up your laser, you can go to the bottom left hand corner and set up as a new tool. And all of these laser settings will be included in this video and are also found in your user manual. This will be a fill operation. Our step over should be set at zero with a 45 degree hatch. Remember to make sure you have selected the right post processor before saving in your files. Afterwards, press calculate. A quick tech tip here. Anytime you're doing a laser operation, 
you can save a lot of time by changing the rapid Z-gap settings. Z-clearance and Z-plunge should be set at 0.001. This will remove the retract from the laser after it completes a vector. Just remember to change this setting back when switching over to a router operation. A quick note, if you've already created your toolpaths, you may have to recalculate if you've changed the rapid Z-gap. Now that we're ready to save our files, we can check the toolpaths we'd like to save. Press the Save Toolpath button. Verify we have the right post processor. In this case, it'll be the Axiom Laser Post. Press the Save button and save these to our flash drive. We hope you enjoyed this video. Remember, for more information, you can always refer to your Axiom user manual or simply visit us online at axiomprecision.com.